Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both published by Simon & Schuster Saga Press. Today, I'm going to be reviewing Ian Rankin's first Inspector Rebus novel, Knots and Crosses. This book came out in 1987 when... Ian Rankin was only 27 years old, so he was pretty young when he debuted with his first Inspector Rebus book. These books are set in Edinburgh, Scotland. So I wore, I, I don't have any Scottish shirts, but I do have Bay City Roller shirt. Now these boys were from Scotland. That's the closest I could get. But hey, at least I tried, right? Knots and Crosses, what's it about? Um, I've got the all. I've got all of Ian Rankin's collection right here. I've got his entire Inspector Rebus collection right here on this shelf. I didn't count them, but there's a lot, and he's been writing them since 1987. Like I said, we always talk about the covers first because you know I like graphic design and cover illustration. I think this is pretty good. You know, for a British mystery series, a Scottish mystery series, by a big name author, you know, it's a, it's just, it's a cool, it's a cool, it's cool, you know, I love the, I love the title, and the title is important to the story, as most titles should be, but, you know, what we're going to talk about is Inspector Rebus, this guy is a former army, I guess there's an army in Scotland that he joined, the Scottish army, I don't know, tell me, tell me people, what, what military does Scotland have? I don't know. But apparently, Inspector Rebus joined it when he was a kid. You know, his father was a um, hypnotist, believe it or not. And he thought his father's job was stupid. And his brother, Michael, wanted to be a hypnotist and follow in his father's footsteps. But Inspector Rebus is like, I think all that stuff is wacky and stupid. I'm going to go join the army. So his father and his brother become besties because they do these with these weird carnival hypnotist acts around you know wherever around europe and stuff and, and rebus is just like i ain't gonna do that crap but the thing is is they make a ton of money doing it and so now his brother is this rich guy and he's just this army dude sort of retired army dude maybe he was in the army for about 15 years and then he joins the scottish police force and becomes an inspector not making a whole lot of money but he still got that jealousy towards his brother because his brother you know is this rich hypnotist and does this carnival hypnotist act anyway i like this book because you know halfway through the book we haven't really got into any mystery yet we're just learning about rebus's life a lot of the different cases that he's working on um and a lot of the uh other people in his police department that he knows and a lot on all of those relationships and we don't really get to the crux of the main plot or the main crime that he's trying to solve here involving the knots and crosses until about halfway through and i really love that slow build-up because it really plays well into rebus's former life as an army person and his former life as a young son of a guy that is a hypnotist all right and suddenly young girls start to go missing and they're finding them dead and they've been strangled now rebus has a young daughter he's got like a deadbeat ex-wife and a young daughter that's about the same age as the girls that are going missing so he's getting really really kind of worried and a lot of, and then and then the killer starts to send rebus specific clues just to rebus like and they involve knots and crosses in the game knots and crosses which i don't know what that's about it's kind of explained in the book but i never really got the gist of it but apparently there's this book called this game called knots and crosses that you can play and so the the murder the murder guy is the, mur the murderer is sort of taking that game and, and playing it with rebus a little bit and so then we get into the main sort of mystery that these uh, young girls are going strangled and then Rebus has to 
sift through why is the murderer targeting me with all of the clues and this, that, and the other. There's a great line in here. I don't know why this line stuck out to me, but it made me laugh out loud when I when I read it. And it's just out of sheer sarcasm, one of the characters, one of the characters writes poetry a lot. And then the other character goes, how can anyone spend their time writing poetry? I don't know why, but that just delighted me. I'm not a poet. I respect people that do poetry. But for some reason, that just tickled me. I was like, that was a great line. And it really kind of, like, bothered the person in the book that the line was said to, to a point where it was even more delightful. But anyway, aside from that, this book, I mean, Ian Rankin, this is, was his first ever novel, and it started his career, Inspector Rebus' career, at age 27, which is fantastic. So, I mean, and the guy's still doing them. He's still doing them. He's just doing tons of them. Well, one a year, about. Maybe one every other year. And Inspector Rebus isn't his only series. He's also got The Complaints. The Complaints are, is a great series if you want to look at the um, how police police themselves. Because the Complaints Department in the Scottish Police Force is sort of like our uh, internal affairs department in uh, the U.S. Uh, police Force. And so he's got a whole series about The Complaints, which is about internal affairs in the Scottish Police. I, I like that one. As much, if not better, than the Rebus, and we'll get into those reviews later, but as far as knots and crosses go, this Ian Rankin's debut was freaking awesome. I give this a good 8.5 out of 10. It's a great, great little mystery novel.